Game of the week. We welcome you inside Ohio Valley Bank Track and Field Stadium on the campus of Point Pleasant High School in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, where the two rivers, the Ohio and Canal, meet. Tonight, here in Point Pleasant, it's a showdown of rivals Gallia Academy from Gallipolis and the homestanding Black Knights, also known as the Big Blacks. It is the 86th meeting all time, and we are happy to bring it to you with our second installment of the Parmar Friday Night Rivals Game of the Week. Greetings from Point Pleasant, along with state coaching legend Mick Price Thanks. and our great FNR crew. I'm Mark Martin. Delighted to have you with us, Mick Price. Rivalry games are sensational. We got a dandy here tonight between Point and Gallia Academy. And early in the season, both teams are unbeaten, but this is going to be a game of diversity. Gallopolis likes to spread you out, run it, throw it, whatever they can do. For Point Pleasant, it's going to be pounding ground down the field. So it's going to be two two teams with different offenses, but both have a winning combination. All right, outstanding players on both sides of the field. Let's check out our players to watch. And for Gallia Academy, leading the way offensively is C. Senior quarterback Hunter Shamlin so far this season. He's just shy of 100 yards passing and has rushed for 101 yards on eight carries in what is a potent Blue Devil offense. Plenty of firepower. His brother Hudson is the team's top rusher. Hunter Shamlin has come back strong after suffering a season-ending knee injury a year ago. Over to Point Pleasant we go, and maybe the strength of this Dave Dars team is the offensive line. All the starters are back from a year ago, including Colton Weaver, a returning All-Stater. Weaver has an offer on the table for Marshall University for football. In addition to the gridiron, he also excels on the mat as a state champion in 2023. It is the first day of September. What a better day than Friday to launch the new month and certainly with a wonderful matchup like the one we have here with two schools separated by just a few miles. It's 2-0 Gallia Academy and 1-0 Point Pleasant. We're just moments away from the kickoff in our second installment of the Parmar Friday Night Rivals Game of the Week. Cole Hines and Stephen Davis for the Blue Devils. For the Big Blacks, Caden Hill, Andrew Schoon, Nate Bentz, Dawson Rollins. Dylan Kiefer and Cole Miller. Tonight's coin toss is sponsored by the Ohio Valley Bank. 
And many thanks to the Ohio Valley Bank. Heads, tails. Heads, tails. Yeah. Go ahead and flip it. Officials from Ohio Valley Bank. It's a tail. Point Pleasant, you've won the toss. What would you like to do? Point Pleasant won the toss, elected to defer. I assume you want the ball. You'd like to kick away from the scoreboard? Black over there, white over here. All right, so Point Pleasant wins the toss, defers to the second half. Tonight's coin toss, sponsored by the U.S. Air Force. Come join us. Your nation is waiting as we get you set for Gallia Academy and Point Pleasant. Great rivalry, 86th meeting all time. And tonight's Friday Night Rivals showdown between the visiting Blue Devils of Gallia Academy and the homestanding Black Knights, also known as the Big Blacks. A Point Pleasant being sponsored in part by your Parmar stores. If you don't have a Parmar store near you now, you will soon. So Point Pleasant will kick it off. Our kickoff sponsored by OVP Health, formerly Ohio Valley Physicians in Business since 1999. Well, here we go, Ladies Mick Price, ready to go. And uh, hey, this is high school football right here. Oh, yeah. What a crowd kickoff. here tonight. Uh, tailgating it's going on rivals. beforehand. This bridge. is just an unbelievable setting Academy. here tonight. Packed it's house, Mark. So Packed house. And, you know, Gallia Academy has already made a good decision because they throw the ball a lot, Black so they're going to have it so the receivers aren't looking in the sun. So that's why they're taking the ball at that end. They may have to catch his kickoff down there in the sun, but their receivers won't have to be looking in the sun, so that was a good decision by them. Had the pleasure of doing these two teams back in the day when I was a young guy doing radio. Point Pleasant was guided by the great Steve Safford. Gallia Academy by Brent Saunders. Two of my all-time favorites. Alex Schrader, one of the best kickers in West Virginia, and he nails it, and Gallia Academy will bring it out here. It's loose. And down goes the return man for the Blue Devils, Connor Rowe, the senior. And he was stopped there at... And around the 12 the yard line, ball. look at Gallia Academy offensively. Well, Hunter Shamblin, Hudson Shamblin, the twins in the backfield. Gunnar Peterson, Joey Darnbro, and Kenyon Franklin. Franklin is dangerous, Mick. And Cole Hines, they're high on the tight end there. And an outstanding offensive line as well. Travis Chapman anchors it there as the center. Well, it'll be interesting to see how Point Pleasant attacks this spread and run defense offense. Trenton Harmon, Ethan Jordan, defensive ends up front, and boy, Shamblin wants to rifle it. In fact, it is going to be Shamblin making the catch. So they change things up here, and Shamblin will score, and a great offensive call by Gallia Academy as it is going to be Parker Bowles. Hey, two weeks in a row, Mark. Opening plays. Kevin Midland last week. Shockey took it 73 yards, and tonight yeah. they yep. throw her on the first play for a touchdown. Yeah, Brock Shelton on the pass, 88 yards. Cole Hines into attempt the extra point. The Cole Hines will be the holder, and the kicker is Caleb Stout. He's an outstanding kicker. Now Shamblin, we talked about Shamblin, and instead of and launching a touchdown field. pass. He catches a touchdown pass, 88 yards. Well, they snap it back, and Braylon Rathburn launches and connects. Rathburn, the junior, 6'3", 165 pounds. Mark, the ball was well thrown. It was right out there where all he had to do was put his arms out and bring it in. It was a well thrown, but also he had time. It was it was well blocked up front by Guy Academy's uh, front line. So anytime you have that much time and you get a guy with that speed of speed and accuracy of quarterback, that is dangerous. So we'll see. Be interesting to see how Point Pleasant reacts. I don't think they'll get too upset over it. I think they'll probably just come down and try to, you know, ground and pound here and try to get one back in. Keep them their offense off the field. Touchdown sponsor, Marshall University. At Marshall University, our mission to provide quality and innovative education to improve the health and well-being of the individual, family, community, and global society. We are Marshall, and our scoring summary, sponsored by Mark A. Hunt and Associates. 
the Kanawha Valley's premier personal injury law firm. Again, one play, 88 yards. Braylon Rathburn fires to Hunter Shamblin. And Cole Carter telling us, you know, we got two good guys that can uh, play that QB position. And so young coach and in this big rivalry game makes a big time call to get it going. And now this is Andrew Shoon and Shoon in all kinds of trouble. He's going to be taken down there around the 15 by Cole Andrew Hines. Schoon on the turn for the Big Black. The Schoon back deep for the Big Mark Blacks, Allison. and he makes the return. Yard line. It'll be first and 10, Big Blacks. Well, you're going to have to give the kickoff teams both a lot of credit, both Point and Gallo, Gallo Academy, Mark, because they both got down the field and did a great job standing in their lanes and keeping them deep in their own territory. Caden Hill, the QB, Brady Bowen, Anthony Marrero, Dawson Rollins, recent. Nate Bentz had a great game last week in that win over Greenbrier East. The third game of the season already for Gallia Academy and game two of the season and for Point Brody Pleasant. On the inside. Mark, I think you're going to see a, a lot from Gallia Academy, Mark. Matt Libertary on the tackle. Looking at the defense there. Second down, 10. Cole Hines, outstanding linebacker. Franklin in that secondary. I think they're going to try to make with, with Point Pleasant's starting quarterback from last week, you know, breaking a foot. And, you know, they have to come in with a, a backup. I know the backup throws the ball pretty well and he can run, but they're going to make them have to throw the ball. So they're really going to stack the box tonight. Yeah, Jason Hughes, outstanding time game out, last out. week for Point Pleasant, Point Pleasant but with about five minutes to go, out. suffers a broken bone and is out for the season. Senior had worked hard to be the starter, replacing the graduating Evan Roach, who is now at Moorhead State University. And there is a look at Mr. Hughes. What a game he had last week. Now, the biggest thing that he can do now for his team is he needs to make sure that he works with the other two quarterbacks and kind of, you know, is there for, you know, emotional support and positive energy because there's going to be things happening. And just like Guy Academy is going to do, they're going to put a bunch of people in the box tonight, and they're going to say you're going to have to prove it that your, your backup quarterback can throw the ball against us. Well, this series dates back to 1922. And it is tight at 41 38, five ties. Second and 10 from the 17. And Hill wants to run. Hill's a good athlete, mm -hmm. freshman, and Hill excellent on the discus thrower. The of course, they've had a wonderful the discus thrower in Cody Schultz, the state champion now at Marshall University. He Steven was Davis a guy they the lost. A year ago due to injury. They had some tough injuries last season. Didn't make the playoffs. And they want to get back quickly. Caden Hill. Awaiting the snap. And the Gallia Academy defense. Kane well, Hill it's going to be close here on the quarterback sneak close by first Hill. First and they did get the first down. Our That's first, downs first down being sponsored in this first quarter by the University of Charleston. We are all Golden Eagles. The University of Charleston's mission is to educate each student for a life of productive work, enlightened first living, and, and community involvement. Take the next step toward success. New fresh set of downs here for Point Pleasant. Caden Hill will hand it off. Hill's hand and off to Brody Bowen. Saint slamming ahead there is Brody Bowen. And let's head down to the third member of our crew here tonight, Hannah Klein. Good evening, Hannah. The 31 yard line, Stephen Davis on the tackle. 
Second down, seven. All right, thank you, Hannah. We're just unfortunate for that young man. Feel for all players who are injured, but nice certainly shot. someone who was a senior. So there's Hill and trying to get it out into the and flat to Nate Bentz. Bentz had a good game against seven. Greenbar East last week, so that brings up third down and seven for Point Pleasant. It was a great play call by Point Pleasant staff, Mark. They got him out there, and uh, they were man-to-man -man on the outside and had eight in the box. And, man, they, if he catches the ball, he's going to have a lot of room to run. That was a well-thrown pass for the first pass of uh, Hall's night. All right, third down and seven. Handoff, and Bowen finds room. Ooh. Bowen Ooh. breaks the tackle at the 30. Bowen will score. 69 yards. Point Pleasant strikes Touchdown. right back. Well, you can tell that those five guys for Point Pleasant up front are back from last year because that's just a bunch of guys that's mature and created a hole. And, man, he made a nice play and got rid of a couple, and off he was going. That Point Pleasant really needed that after the opening play. Touchdown sponsored by Marshall University. So Schrader will try to even things up here. Hill the holder. The kick and is the up. is up. And, and the kick is, is good. good. 840 to go here in this Just first quarter. Like and this the river rivalry. Seven, seven. Even Steven at 7-7. Seven, seven. Another look, McBryce. Man, as you can see him come through, there's a couple missed tackles up in there. But he does a great job keeping it rolling. Hey, uh, Gallia Academy did a good job trying to catch him at the end, but hey, just wasn't enough, and everybody was up front. Really good job by the front five up front getting blocks, putting their hats on people and allowing him to get out through there. Good play call. Well, this is what you wanted, wasn't it, Mark, in a rivalry game? No Answer doubt. back at home. Answer back. Take a little of the momentum away from Gallia Academy, and next thing you know, it's 7-7, and -seven, now we're all squared again, and all right, we'll see what we can do. This is a long game, so, you know, you got to just keep playing. Let's say you can't get too high and you can't get too low when things happen. Darn bro and row are deep. Schrader booms it, and that will land in the end zone. Kickoffs being sponsored by OVP Health. And our scoring summary brought to you by Mark A. Hunt and Associates. The Canal Valley's premier personal injury law firm. Six plays, 82 yards, takes 301 off the clock. Now six plays, 82 yards for the Point Pleasant offense. One play, 88 yards. So, Mick, we've had... Back-to-back -back games where a team scored on the first offensive play of the contest. Well, they keep Rathbird in at QB and a handoff to Franklin and a look for a variety of ways, Mick, to get Kenyon him the, the ball. ball Good open field tackle there by Shoon. They're yards. getting back up there quick, Mark. They really and want to go fast. Schoon on the tackle from the Big Blacks. Second down, single coverage, four. single coverage, top side, trips to the right. Schoon, an outstanding player, one of the returners, and now this time Rathburn will fire it into the hands of Franklin, Franklin and, and he will three. get the first down, pick up of seven on the play. Again, our first downs here in this opening quarter being sponsored by the University of Charleston. University of Charleston getting a big win last night over Gannon to open up the season. Hand off here for the Blue Devils as they put it on the ground, and that was Hudson Shamblin. 
Hunter Shamblin's twin brother. We've got Hunter as a wide out here in this game, and they're stacked on the near side. Rathburn back to pass, lets it fly, looking for his receiver, and just off the fingertips of Joey Darnbro. Doing the countdown to kickoff series during the month of August, traveling around. Darnbro, one of the young men that Cole Carter wanted us to talk to, personable young man, and just missed latching on to that one for what might have been another six. So it brings up third and nine here. Rathburn has time, fires looking for Franklin, and Franklin, you know, he gathered a crowd there. Intended for Kenyon Franklin and pretty nice it's coverage there now. by Point Pleasant. Reese Hunt over there on the coverage. Yeah, and they did a nice job Reese bracketing Hunt. Mark to make sure that, and you know, the ball had to be thrown over the inside box. guy and uh, made it a tough throw to make. But, uh, hey, they got him, got him to get out of there and get that offense off the, off the field. That's the key for Point Pleasant. Hunting for the Blue Devils. Schoon. Back deep. Stout is the punter. Lifting it skyward, and Schoon will have it. And Schoon makes a couple of miss, and then Schoon yeah, takes Schoon it to the 43 nice yard line. Parker yard Burris line. makes the tackle along with black. Wesley Saunders. And it will be timeout. Point Pleasant with the football at its own 44 when we return. Tie game in the Battle of the Bridge. And congratulations to Nate. Don't forget to check our Facebook page tonight for tonight's player of the game immediately following. Are they, are the they testing tonight. the baseball scoreboard? <laughs> Well, it's time for Smile Cam, sponsored by Mountain State Oral and Facial Surgery. Restore your smile with Same Day Smile. Schedule an appointment online with Mountain State Oral and Facial Surgery at mtstateoms. Dot com. Anywhere else that is not supporting our football team. Now, McPrice, we have watched these teams. Put it in the end zone on the first Possessions, respectively. And now it will be Point Pleasant going back to work as they force Gallia Academy into a punting situation. Ball at the 44-yard line for the Big Blacks and a direct snap to Hill. Hill and Hill takes it Hill near midfield. Franklin with the tackle. Nice hold by the offensive line on the left side. 
good first down call, safe call, and this is something Point Pleasant's going to want to do all night. The longer they can keep uh, the offense off the field for Gallia Academy, the more effective I think they're going to be tonight. 86th meeting all time. 42 wins, Gallia Academy, 38 Point Pleasant, five ties. Caden Hill will hand it off, and here's Bowen, and Bowen meets a wall there, and Cole Hines, who is our Todd Judy Ford Scholar-Athlete representing Gallia Academy High School, makes the stop. Nice job by the defense, shoving everything back down to the inside, not getting kicked out, making it tough, not letting him get to the outside. Really good job defensively. Greenbar East led Point Pleasant last week, 7-6 at halftime, but... All point in the second half. Talked about the injured quarterback, Hughes, for Point Pleasant. Jason Hughes had two touchdowns in the game, an eight-yard run and a big 53-yard run. Third down and two. Football at the Gallia, 48. And we have a timeout, timeout. called here Point by Point second Pleasant. of the first half. Yeah, I don't think Coach Doris was... Very happy with the alignment. I think they were supposed to be lined up a little differently for a two-yard. Somebody was not in the proper alignment. But they're going over it right now, and they're going to get the instruction. He's done a wonderful job over the years. Been a part of the Point President program here for many years, and good dude, man. Really good guy, one of the good guys in all of coaching. And how about across the way, Mick? I think you can relate to this. Cole Carter, he's 24 years old. What were you, 22, your first coaching job? Yeah. 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 Wow. Head coach, head coach. Yes. That's, that's a big responsibility. So, Yeah, I thought I knew what I was doing. <laughs> but you had a guy named Richard Summers. That didn't well, he hurt. Helped. He, <laughs> helped, he helped a really idiot coach that thought he knew what he was doing because when you got, got a guy that averaged 38 points a game and there's no three-point line, yeah, he can make you a good coach all of a sudden. Scored 74 in a game. Well, I think you've proven yourself through the nice years, my man. Sponsored by City Ice Over and 700 and to City Ice and Fuel. career wins. Sponsoring the game ball tonight. Jason Wilkinson, our referee. Joe Turley, our umpire. Jason Buckley, the headlinesman. Charlie Short, the line After judge. The Robert Belly is the, the Dooley is the back judge. Alex Kingery, the field judge. And Nelson Cunningham, the side judge. Hill gets the snap. Hill Good job. lowers his head and option. takes it to the 43-yard line. That'll be it's another first, first down sponsored by the University of Charleston. Great job of the offensive line firing out, getting him enough room to get that first down. It's gonna, they're going to make it tough on uh, Gallia Academy's defense. They're going to try to keep them on the field as much as they can. Point Pleasant had 227 yards of offense last week, 202 of those on the ground. Point with three first downs, Gallia Academy with two. And we have whistles sounding here with 5-10. Looks like it could be offsides against Gallia Academy. Dead ball, encroachment on the defense, number 76. Five yards from the previous spot, first down. Travis Chapman, the guilty party there. Chapman, outstanding 5'10", 260-pound junior. Robert Stegall is our statistician. Hannah Klein on the sidelines, our great FNR crew, Michelle Carroll and all the gang here tonight bring you wonderful pictures and sights and sounds of High school football, the rivers of the Ohio and Kanawha meet here in this historic area. Uh, Hill in trouble, and Hill going to make something Uh of it. Hill breaks the tackle. Caden Hill, did he step out? He did. But what an effort, Mick, by Caden Hill. First of all, the ball was fumbled. It was up high, and he, you know, it was bobbled. And then he decided, I got to run this. And then he takes off. And boy, I tell you what, for being a backup, he's having a pretty good first quarter mark. And you, all you could ask. First down, big black. Some more about these referees that's on this game here, Mark. Many of those guys also do high school basketball. 
you know, several of the guys that are doing this game tonight do high school basketball. So you mentioned about how tough it is. Here you can see now he squeaks out of there. And, boy, I tell you what, we're button up that chin strap, son. Back to live action oh. now here. And a pitch to the outside and trying to turn the corner is Anthony, Anthony Marrero. Marrero, the, the sophomore, right for a couple yards. speedy guy, and gets slowed down there. Well, Gallia Academy's Joey defense Darnell did a nice job of stringing it out and not letting Gallia him turn Academy. it up. They did a good job taking on the double team out there, trying to get him to turn inside, and then, you know, coming up making Second a play. Second down and goal from the eight-yard line. So that run by Hill was 28 yards. Marrero picks up three. Second down and football resting at the eight. Ball oh. is loose. I think he got back on it. Man. Gallia Academy saying they have Close. it. They don't have it. They wouldn't be walking back on that. <laughs> and dangerous Pull there the for play, Point Pleasant, but the they will. See, that's just Third lack of, down, that's just from the lack nine, of number of attempts in doing it, Mark. I mean, you know, it just takes us so many reps to, to, to really become very good at it, to make sure that you do it every play the same way, the right way, and sometimes you get a little, you know, easy about it, and next thing you know, you haven't paid attention and you got to fumble. Third down nine. Boat in motion. Hill looking to throw. Hill in trouble. Throws it in the direction of Bentz. A good heads up play there by Hill. Well, that, yeah, that's dangerous. He was getting slung around. That will bring in Schrader to attempt a field goal here. Bryson Eufer, sophomore, with a nice play there defensively for Gallia Academy. Head coach Cole Carter. Hill is the holder, and the snapper is Josh Chapman. We've watched Schrader earlier. He drilled one into the end zone on a kickoff. 26-yard attempt. Good snap, good hold, and the kick is up, and it is and good. field goal by Alex Schrader the Gallia Academy struck first. Point Pleasant has answered with 10 of its own with 3-10 to go the night, 10, in the football Gallia game. Academy we break away from Ohio Valley Bank Track and Field percent. Stadium, Battle of the Bridge. Back inside Ohio Valley Bank, track and field stadium here in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. 
And the Point Pleasant Big Blacks have taken a 10-7 lead on a 26-yard field goal by Alex Schrader, Mark A. Hunt, and Associates Attorneys at Law scoring summary. And it was eight plays, 47 yards, 404 off the clock. Point Pleasant with 124 yards rushing. On 11 attempts, and Schrader drills this one, and Rowe will watch it bounce and go into the end zone. Schrader has been coached by Mark Johnson, who was a great kicker at nearby Ripley and moved on to WVU, still works with kickers in the area. Down to Hannah Klein we go with two special guests. Hannah? Well, it's the Battle of the Bridge, a tense battle between Point Pleasant and Gallia Academy. But this year, the competition added a new layer with some friendly wagers made by Mason County Prosecutor Seth Gatskin, Gallia County Prosecutor Jason Holdred, and now Sheriff Corey Miller and Sheriff Champlin joining in. Whoever loses tonight's game will have to bear the burden and deliver a box of donuts while wearing the winning team's colors. So who will pay the sweet price? We will find out. A wonderful story there, Hannah. So which one will wear the opposition's jersey around? Time will tell. So Shamblin. Second down, six. In there at QB, and now Rathburn has returned. As Hudson Shamblin. Lined up behind him, gain of four on the play, second and six for Cole Carter's Gallia Academy Blue Devils. Shoot it out to Franklin, and Franklin, dangerous anytime that ball is in his hands, and he gets it to the 35-yard line. Also an outstanding basketball player for Gary Lee Harrison, one of the all-time great Gallia Academy athletes, not just first basketball, but football play. as well. So it will be a first down sponsored by the University of Charleston as Franklin gets it to the 35. Rathburn ready to go back to work. Cole Hines shifts in, and Rathburn fires it out. Hunter Shamble with the nice hands. Shamble will take it to the 42-yard line, seven-yard pickup. Forced out of bounds at the 42-yard line. They're moving the ball, Mick. Well, they're, getting the, they're getting the ball in the hands of good athletes who can make plays. The the There's a lot line. of ways to gain yardage on, by an offense. Three. You don't always have to thug it right up the middle. Rathburn fires. Cole Hines catches and makes the grab. That will be a first down. Pick up a five on the play. First down First sponsored down by the University of Charleston. So last year at Memorial Field in Gallipolis, it was a 22-21 victory. Point Pleasant, Nick, we had the game two years ago here. What a game it was, 26-22. Come back by Point Pleasant. Rathburn fires Franklin with the catch. And the nifty move as he gets it into Rathburn's Point Pleasant territory. Franklin. A good defense out on the outside, Mark. You're one on one with somebody. You got to get in there and get against these legs. He did a really nice job limiting him to a short short yard. There's Reese Hunt, outstanding athlete, comes up and makes the stop. They'll spot it at the 48 yard line. A series between two schools in which. At one point, they traveled by barge, barge. to yeah. get the games. That's back when Jerome Van Meter was coaching here at Point Pleasant. Rathburn guns. Catch made by Cole Hines. Slips the tackler, and Hines will take it to the 37-yard line. Cole Hines. Nine-yard nice, yard gain. Nice Andrews job by 11 coming up and stop. getting down First on those down ankles because he was going. He had a good block. He caught the ball inside. He got a block from the outside receiver. These guys from Gallia Academy do a nice job blocking for each other, Mark. Schoon comes up and Gallia. makes the stop. Gallia Academy going to call a timeout here with 50 seconds to go in the first quarter. Well, Mick, traveling from Ravenswood, did you just j- jump on a barge and come down? <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Robert Stigall, but you easily he, caught, could have, he caught one in Charleston. You easily could have come down the Ohio River. They got several <laughs> Robert barges. Robert came down the Kanawha, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They have several barges that come down through here and pass Point Pleasant on the way to Huntington or whatever. So I always enjoyed the, the history of river towns, Mark. I just think it's really exciting, especially, you know, here in Point Pleasant, they have down here, they've done a great job on the wall down there of putting the history uh, up on the banks, and of course, it goes right into Tuindui Park, which is on the corner there of the Canal and the Ohio. So, under Dave Darst, Point Pleasant has played for a state championship, Double A. I mean, there for a few years, they were on a roll, and not only in Double A, they had to move up to Triple A, yeah. and they made the Triple A playoffs all four years before moving back down. Been a lot of great. Quarterbacks leading the way, but right now it's the point defense trying to attack a very impressive Gallia Academy offense. Rathburn's got time, unleashes Franklin with the grab on the move. Takes it to the 19-yard line, an 18-yard pickup. Well, they're gonna, they're putting the pressure on the corners and the safeties from Point Pleasant. They're just gonna have to, you're gonna have to send some people and make him throw it a little quicker or something. He can't stand back there all day because he could pick him apart. He throws the ball extremely well, and he's got great athletic receivers. Greenville State University Red Zone is where Gallia Academy will operate now after they pick up yet another first down, sponsored by the University of Charleston, and Rathburn will hand it off and. Slipping through, and I believe it will be Rowe on the carry. Connor Rowe, 5'11", 180, a senior. Stop there by Connor Hatton for the Big Blacks. Connor Hatton makes the tackle, so it's Connor against Connor. And we have ran out of time here in this first quarter of action. Very entertaining opening 12 minutes of play. play. Gallia Academy scores on its very first play. Point Gallia Pleasant Academy answers, seven. and then tax on a field goal, and that's where we are. 10-7, Big Blacks on top on FNR. Back inside Ohio Valley Bank Track and Field Stadium, and it is a 10-7 lead as we start the second quarter here on our Parmar Friday Night Rivals Game of the Week. Along with state coaching legend Mick Price, Hannah Klein on the sidelines, our great FNR crew, and Mark Martin, delighted to have you with us. We were just talking about Mark Johnson, the great kicker from Ripley and later WVU, and up here in the booth visiting, so he's checking out his 
Prize Pupil and Schrader. And right now, Point Pleasant trying to get a stop here as Rathburn guns it out. And the catch made there, Hunter Shamblin. Well, Shamblin was our player to watch in the game, Mick, as a quarterback, and he's turned into yeah. quite the receiver here in the game. Well, he's done a nice job, but, man, Gallia County's doing a nice job just picking and choosing where they're throwing the ball and, and making plays. They're doing a really good job right now. First downs here in the second quarter brought to you by Optimum. Go faster, go farther. Now a direct snap to Hunter Shamlin. He'll turn the corner, and Shamlin is in for the touchdown. Nine-yard scamper, touchdown, Brain, sponsored by Marshall University. And Gallia Academy goes back in front here in this battle of the bridge. A little trickery, Mark, as they moved the quarterback out of there and brought his brother in, and all of a sudden he runs out to the right side and, and gets in the corner. He has great speed, speed and great athleticism. Okay, well, we've got Mark up here. We should ask him to evaluate the kicker from Guy Academy. Mark, he, he's got a pretty lively leg, too, doesn't he? Yeah, left-footed Caleb Stout drills it Stout through, and that is his good. second extra point of the night. Another look here, Mick Hunter Shamblin, nine-yard TD run. The Academy retakes the lead, 14 And the Blue Devils go back in front, 14 to 10. Boy, they did a nice job picking and choosing all the way down the the field it really well play called and kids executing like crazy man it was really a nice job by them point pleasant's got to answer though just because they're down 14 10 they got to come back and do a little bit of their own and their offensive line has done a really good job pushing the ball so uh it'll be interesting special thanks to our championship sponsors this year. Well, we've had Home, games of 14 13 26 22 village pizza and 22 21 Henley law office AB Poles and Lighting and Tri State. Point Pleasant's won two spot. out of the last three after they had lost very very three straight. Thanks to all those so it will be Stout on our OVP health kickoff. OVP health, formerly Ohio Valley Physicians, in business since 1999. Stout has it teed up. Brody Bowen, Dawson Rollins. And Bowen. Anthony Marrero back deep and Rawson and Marrero go Stop back deep. Pick it away for the Blue Devils. Four point pleasant. Stout with the knuckleball. Marrero scoops it up at the 20. And Marrero is buried there. And that was. Hudson Shamblin coming in and making the play. So we saw Hunter Shamblin score on the the touchdown reception or on the TD run after the TD reception to start the game. And now Hudson Shamblin, the team's top rusher. He rushed for 1,000 yards a year ago. And, of course, high school football, you do it all. Yeah. Played it on, did it there on special teams. And, of course, he's an outstanding linebacker. So Point Pleasant goes to work here. Good defense again by Bryson Eufer. Go back to that scoring drive. On the stop. Scoring Blake summary Caldwell sponsored by Mark A. Hunt and Associates as we see the great defensive play there by Eufer. Four yard loss, second down. Was Ten plays, for the big 80 yards, took 337. Mark A. Hunt and Associates, attorneys at law, the Canal Valley's premier personal. Injury law firm. So it was a loss of four on the play. Football at the 27-yard line. Out over center for Point Pleasant is Caleb Jones. And not much happening here for Point. Caden Hill keeps it and gains a couple yards. Cole Hines. Asher Robinson is in the game now for Point Pleasant. Robinson was a guy that battled throughout the week, Mick. He's an excellent athlete, great basketball player. He's a junior. I think he's more of a runner. I think it got him in there to, you know. He replaces Hill, so here is Robinson. 
Rolling, Just looking, like and Ooh. Robinson taken down. Another big lick applied hey, by Hunter Shamblin. That was well defended. Six. As he comes out, he's looking. He's got guys out there, and they've defended it pretty well, and he's looking, looking, and all of a sudden, and you don't see him coming through there. That'll teach you to put your chin strap on a little tighter. Caden Hill to punt for the Big Lacks. So Caden Hill now in to punt. There is a good look at back. Hunter Shamblin. Shamblin brothers were a big part of the game two years ago. We did here on FNR. Hill, left footed punter, and gets it to Franklin. Franklin at the 35. The last thing you want that guy to do is step on the gas. Oh, yeah. And he gets it about the midfield, Mark, and they're really confident with off what they did offensively the last time. So they're going to be a confident group of guys and spread them out and, you know, nickel dime them. 12-yard return. We have a flag on the play. Here we go. Jason Wilkinson. Illegal block in the back. Number nine of the return team. Ten yards from the end of the run. First down. So that will send the Blue Devils – Back a bit as you take another look at the Franklin return. There's the block in the back right in front of you. Been better off just put your hands up and go by and get what you can. Because, man, I tell you, instead of having it midfield, now you get the ball on the 36-yard line. Rathburn stays in at quarterback for Gallia Academy. Getting it in Tennifer for Cole Hines. Ball falls incomplete. Mick, you made a good observation before the game. You always make great observations, but I like the one where you said you don't see too many teams wearing white helmets these days, and we got a game here where both teams are wearing white helmets. Nice job by the Point Pleasant defense right there. They put enough pressure on him. He had to get rid of that ball just a little early and uh, caused the in, caused the ball to be incomplete. But good job by Point's defense because they're going to have to come up with a play here. Schoon comes in, and Marrero goes out defensively for Point. Here's Rathburn looking and keeping his eyes down the field and fires, and the catch is made by Franklin. Outstanding job by the Gallia Academy quarterback. There was some running room there, but he just kept looking downfield for his man. Well, Point Pleasant was spying on him, and they weren't going to let him take off running it. Wow, what a catch. And so they did a nice job, but my goodness gracious, what a catch on that side. 18-yard pickup. Optimum first down. Blue Devils on the march here. Get it into the hands. Nice job oh. defensively there. Hudson Shamblin as Point Pleasant bottles him up. Oh, they did, Mark. They really did a nice job. They did a really good job of pushing That's across the line and stretching, it, stretching that thing out. By Nate, Nate Benson, Bentz the on the stop there. Also Brody Pearson in there for the Big Black. Second down nine. One-yard pickup on the play. Rowe has checked into the backfield for Gallia Academy. Rathburn launches, catch made by Hunter Shamblin, and Shamblin taken down, and the yep. flags will come out. Yep, that's going to be a horse collar. Rathburn's pass is complete to Shamblin. Tack it on to the Horse outstanding down. pass and catch. Rathburn to Hunter Shamblin. Very impressive offense, Mark. Very just kind of have an idea of what they want to do and who they want to go to, and they keep you mixed up, you know, so you don't get an idea of what's going on. I'm very impressed with the offensive play calls and the execution by Gallia Academy. Ball, personal foul, late hit out of bounds on the defense. Half the distance to the goal, first down. Yeah, here you go. Yeah, you can see him on the side, stutter step, try to get to the outside. And he's already out of bounds, and I think this is why they're calling it. He kept playing. There's been a, an emphasis this year to keep the play clean on the sideline. 
Rathburn back to pass again. Fires in the direction of Franklin. Goes incomplete. Well, Franklin needed to move away from the defensive player, Mark, and that's exactly what he thought he was going to do. He thought he was going to move to the inside in between those two guys, and he just didn't. You'll see it on film when he goes back and watches it tomorrow or Sunday or Monday. Cole Carter out to talk with his quarterback, Braylon Rathburn. Pro style QB, and he has shown it here. Rowe and Hines in the backfield. Rathburn fires and got his man, Franklin, with the touchdown. Well executed. Really ran a good route and really well thrown pass and blocked so he could throw it out there. Touchdown sponsored by Marshall University at Marshall University. Our mission is to provide a quality and innovative education to improve the health and well-being of the individual, family, community, and global society. We are Marshall. Cole Hines is the holder. Stout, the kicker. Darnbro, the snapper. Kick is up, and And it is good. good. The Gallia Academy with back-to-back TDs, and it's Rathburn. And Franklin with the great snag. Breaking the action here at Ohio Valley Bank Track and Field Stadium. And Gallia Academy in the lead over Point Pleasant 21 to 10. Hannah Klein has the T-shirt gun out. Tonight's T-shirt gun sponsor is Polka Valley Bank. Polka Valley Bank leverages the value of your home and explores all the possibilities with a Polka Valley Bank home equity line of credit. Polka Valley Bank, where relationships matter. And Hannah's got a lot of options there. You get a really good shot of the home crowd here tonight, Mick Price, in this river rivalry. Well, she's got that shirt gun in front of her. That that gives you a lot of options immediately. (laughs) Stout will kick it off. We will bring you our scoring summary as soon as he puts his left foot into the football. Has it all teed up nicely there. And it's going to hit the up back. 
Well, I tell you, nice snag there. Guy Academy does a good job of getting down there in a hurry, man. They they got in them lanes, but when you kick it line drive that hurry that fast, and it gives him a chance to turn Landon and look Long up the field, that's a problem. Point Pleasant tackle at the thirty yard. So line. Landon Long, a sophomore, five seven one forty. Joey Darnborough on the a stop four. sophomore. Kick-out. Our scoring summary. Sponsored by Mark A. Hunt and Associates. Six First plays, 64 yards, two minutes, and 22 seconds. thing that's been really impressing me about Cole Carter's team, Mick, in terms of receiving is these guys are catching the ball with their hands. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're and high-pointing the ball. I mean, they're, they're catching it, looking at the end. The play clocks on the field are malfunctioning. The play clock will be kept on the field. When 10 seconds are left on the play clock, the back judge will put his hand in the air. Well, Mr. Wilkerson, he is in complete control anymore. Now, he's told everybody here, however many people's here, exactly what's going to happen, so there's no no complaints. Hand off and slamming straight ahead is Bowen. Has that big 69-yard to touchdown Bowen. in the game. Harry's Mark, I think this is a really important offensive possession. For Point Pleasant, and the reason I say that, and I know everybody says this is a big possession, it's a big possession, but it's twenty-one, it's twenty-one ten, and Point Pleasant haven't really come close to stopping them the last two drives, and they don't want to give them the ball back quickly because they have playing with such confidence right now. If they could put a drive together and get down and get a score, make it you know twenty-one thirteen, twenty-one seventeen, I think it would be a, do a lot for Point Pleasant's. Brody Another Bowen carry the by Bowen. Brody Bowen. Two. Just a sophomore. Stop there the is Hunter Shamblin, who's done it on both sides of the bowl tonight. Number five. And I also think Galley Academy, Mark, is going to stack that boxing because you need to throw it. I mean, you're, your first team quarterback's out with a broken ankle, and I said, you know, you're going to have to throw it on us. Look how many of them's up the line of scrimmage. There's six, seven, eight. There's eight in the box right now. Asher Robinson still in at quarterback, and here's Bowen trying to carve his way to first down yardage. Cole Hines made the tackle, but that's going to bring up fourth down here, and Point Pleasant will have to kick it away. Ball going to be at the 37-yard line. Just too many people at the point of attack to block, Mark. A really good job by Gallia Academy. That's the second time they haven't had enough people out there. But the play clock not working. Caden Hill, Ooh. boy, good pursuit there. And that one sails out of bounds. I think they're going to mark it at the 28-yard line. 28-yard line, 30-yard line, and no return, Mark. That's a key. No return. Out of bounds. A 35-yard Time pump. Out. We've got a break in the action here. Gallia Time Academy back with the football up 11 here Academy on our Parmar Astros Friday Night Academy. Rivals Game of the Week.
Well, Mick Price, last week we had Cabell Midland and GW very impressed with Cabell Midland. They are on the road tonight at Spring Valley, and that game's getting a late start. They had a transformer blow there at Spring Valley High School, so that one's scheduled to get going just about right now. That can cause a lot of problems, work with the transformer blows. There's a lot of people goes down on that. Rathburn, back to pass. Let's it fly, looking for Shamblin, who makes the sensational diving grab at the 49-yard line. Had a lot of time, Mark, and he was able to, enough room on the other side to, to, so he could operate. He's got too much time. You get that much time, and he's really on a lot of rhythm right here. Man, this is a really good team, Mark. 20-yard pickup. Optimum first down. Rathburn faked it to Rowe, and now Rathburn oh still on his feet and fires, and Franklin is in open field and has speed. Franklin will score. 51 yards. Flag comes out. Rathburn's pass complete to May have been a little celebrating the there at the end. I thought maybe it was on a broken play. They might have had some linemen downfield. That's what I was looking for to see if anybody got downfield, but they may have been coached so well on plays like that that stay there because you never know when he's going to break it. So they're asking if they want it on this or the kickoff. Jason Wilkinson will let us know what's happening. Touchdown is good. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number zero of the offense. That is his first towards ejection. And, you know, if you're Cole Carter, the message will be you're a senior You've done this before, so it's a, you know you, you're excited. You yeah. want to go into but that. But act like you've been there. Act like you've been there. You Touchdown. Know, take away from your team. Sponsored by Marshall University Stout. Looking to put Gallia Academy up by 18, and a little hesitation there, but he drills it through. Gallia Academy, 10 point pleasant. And just like that, Blue Devils with a third. Straight here's, touchdown. Well, here's the first play in the, in the series where he runs it to the outside and just didn't get good enough coverage from the safety there getting up on it. And then a little later on, he sh- runs a broken play, and the broken play turns into a touchdown because the corner come up. I think this is it, Mark. The, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, halftime tonight. We'll have halftime entertainment by the Gallia Academy marching band and your yeah. point pleasant black. I see it breaks down right band. here, but as he turns that corner right there, Got somebody off of him, and man, away he goes. Our scoring summary, sponsored by Mark A. Hunt and Associates, attorney at law, the Canal Valley's premier personal injury law firm. Two plays, 71 yards, 40 seconds. 15 yards. Well, Mark, with 3.58 left in the second quarter and down 28 to 10, and you know how potent Gallia Academy's offense is, Point Pleasant is going to take the penalty to hope they get better field position right here. And the last one was a line drop kick, so they really need to move up on this. And if they can get the ball on the other side of the 50 and get it back over here, maybe they can put some drive, a drive together to get it into the end zone. They really need to get some points right here. Well, Gallia Academy gained, came into this game. They had outscored the opposition 69 to nothing. So Point Pleasant, the first team to score against the Blue Devils this season, had a lead of 10 to 7. But since then, it has been all Blue Devils with three straight touchdowns. So Stout kicks at the 25 and lifts this one skyward. Camping Face under mask. it for the Bro, Point Pleasant. Big Blacks was Blacks. Dawson Rollins, and I believe we're going to have a, a face, back call, face mask called here. That'll get the ball inside the 40, so they just need to put a really good drive together here, Mark. They really need to get some positive play, especially on this first play. I mean, let's just line up and let's get after them here a little bit. And if we're going to put eight in the, blocks, in the box, let's make them pay for it.
We have two fouls on the play. Live ball, personal foul, face mask on the kicking team. Dead ball, personal foul on the return team. First. Offset. So nobody gets nothing, and it's right where it's at. So here you can see it right here, Mark, as he comes down. There's the face mask. There's the face mask. And then you can see here where the kid from the boy from Point Pleasant threw the kid out of bounds after the play was over. So that's where the offset come from. Return was actually by Bowen. I believe we had said 27 Rollins. It was 37 Bowen. All right, so Point Pleasant with the football at its own 46 with 3.52 to go here in the first half. Marrero in motion and nice call. Yeah, nice little nice call. Got them all going the other way. Bents with the nice carry down to the 41 yard line. So well good. blocked, little misdirection, bringing some people Nate out Benz of the line, the carry for the kicking out and leading up. Nice call. Bents, the guy. Hey, here you go, yeah, Mark. You see it here. See the kick out right there, and they got up inside of it. Did a nice job hanging on that ball. They're going to be stripping it. 41 yard line, first and 10 point play. Bents, the guy they really need to rely on here now to try to get back into this game. 13 yard pickup, tight formation. Marrero in motion again, and another inside handoff to Bents. Takes it inside Bence the 40. The carrier, once again, a gain of two yards. You know, as Bentz last week had a big reception against Greenbrier East that led to the go-ahead touchdown to really get things going for Point Pleasant in that second half. Again, they trailed Greenbrier East 7-6 at the break and then went on to post the 26-7 victory. Gain of two. And now here is Bowen. Had a Brody much needed, Mark. Harris what they're doing right now, Mark, is what they really got to do. They're doing a good job, and they're keeping keeping it off bounds. You see right here, there's a lead block right there. He does a nice block, sets up inside. Just missed a block on the outside. It could have been a lot more. This is a big play right here, Mark, and I think they'll two, I think they're going to get two plays for this. I don't think they can afford to turn it over to Gallia Academy again. They do have the play clocks on the field working again, so that certainly allows for the offense to manage things a little better. Bowen in motion, and here's Asher Robinson, and Robinson's going to be wrapped up there. Boy, I'll tell you who's played a great game defensively for Guy Academy is Bryson Eufer, number Asher 51. Robinson, yeah, he's done a nice job. You can see here, the they didn't fool anybody with this play, and they got so many people in the box they right well there, Mark. They're going to say, you're not going to throw it, so we'll just man you on the outside. And... Sophomore there at that nose guard. Nice lean body. Robinson lost the football, and down he goes. Man, that's a that's a tough, that's a tough one because you're going to turn over the minute 36, and it doesn't take Gall- 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 Academy very long to get her down. He, bad snap on fourth down. Stephen Davis was there. Corey Mock was there for the Blue Devils, and they had the football. Cole Carter. And they were coming, Mark. I mean, they're fourth down, they're going to come. They're not, they know Point Pleasant's not going to pass right there. These aren't kids that's really had a lot of uh, success in backup roles here at Point Pleasant leading up into the season. You don't get a lot of time. And again, throughout seven on sevens, the month of August, pretty much Jason Hughes. He, he got a battle from... Hill and Robinson, but when it was all said and done, he wins the job. Here's Rathburn gunning and off the fingertips of the receiver there for Gallia Academy, Darnbro, the intended receiver, the senior. You can see right here, he's got him leading right out there. Oh, man. Second down 10 coming up. That's where they say football is a game of inches. That was two or three inches from being caught and taken down the field. Dangerous offense right now, Mark. I mean, Point Pleasant's really got to rear their ugly heads right here and really got to do a good job and get a stop here. Yeah, coach is mad. Somebody, somebody lined out. up in the wrong place. Gallia, second charge timeout of the first half. So Gallia Academy calling a timeout. Mark, I found it interesting in, in the pregame when we were talking to the coaches. And you can see the 
Guy Academy's coach when we were talking to him, he had a two sheets. And on that sheet, he had sets of plays if they're on the left half, left hash, in the middle, or on the right hash. And whether it's whatever down it is, first and 10, first and 15, second and two, second and 10. I mean, he's got them where all he's got to do is look at them, and they've already pre-planned what they're doing. Very, very efficient. You can tell. You can tell how organized they are by watching them. Well, coming up on our Huntington Mall halftime report, we will salute our Todd, Judy Ford, scholar athletes from both Gallia Academy and Point Pleasant High School. In addition, we will take you inside the two high schools for a peek at a couple of great academic programs taking place, and we will bring you some of the outstanding highlights from the first half, break down what we saw from the two teams during the first 24 minutes of play. The Huntington Mall invites you to discover all the great dishes the restaurants have to offer. Dine in, enjoy the patio, or eat in your car. It's the great dining adventure at the Huntington Mall. Rathburn launches, and oh. darn bro just could not bring it in. Wow. Pass. Right on the money. Tender for Joey Darnbro falls incomplete. Man, this ball was right in his arms, and he's throwing it under pressure. And he put this ball exactly where he got to catch it. Great public address announcer here at Ohio Valley Bank Track and Field Stadium. Randy Parsons had a chance to do radio with Randy during my years here in Gallup Police. Randy and I went to the Gallia Academy Logan High School game, Logan, Ohio, back in 1987. Ball falls incomplete. Rathren's pass intended for Alex Blair is incomplete. Hey. Good job by the point defense. I know there was a couple of balls that should have been caught, but they made it tough on them to catch the balls. They had people in the face. They had people near the receiver. So uh, they're going to make them punt here. So good job by them keeping them out of the end zone. The punt for the Blue Devils. It would have been very difficult if they had gone down 35 and a half. It had been, it'd been very tough. Yeah, the Academy with over 300 yards of offense. Point Pleasant at 149. Stout. Kicks it away, and this one will go out of bounds. It's all Blair there, the intended Let's receiver. First time he had been targeted here line. tonight. First and ten, Big Blacks. Now we've seen some great plays in this game. Of course, after the game, we will bring you our Big Sandy Superstore big play of the game when big plays happen. Big Sandy Superstore also donates $500 each week to the host school here on our Parmar Friday Night Rivals game of the week. So 1.14 to go, and Dave Darst appears to have brought Hill back into the game as the quarterback. Now, they're not going to do anything too drastic here, Mark. Matter of fact, they probably want to go in, you know, get everybody, collect them up, and say, hey, these are things we can do. Here's what we got to do defensively, and just get everybody on the same page. Hill will keep it. Hill's got some room. Hill down to the 40-yard line. Hill, the for the 24-yard pickup by Hill. Line. Great block up inside. Line. Down there, boom, boom, and he gets up inside. That was a great job by the offensive line. Hunter Shamblin on the tackle, but that's a point pleasant. Big Blacks first down. Move it back to the 41-yard line. Well, maybe they can get in field goal range, Mark. I mean, it's on the 41 right now. If they could get a couple plays here. 20-yard pickup, optimum first down. Hill, the lefty, looks, launches, oh and bents. Hill showing off the arm. Well, he's got a good arm. Matter of fact, uh, the coaches had mentioned before the game that he actually throws the ball pretty well. But boy, it was a dangerous Second pass right there. They've had some great quarterbacks here at Point Pleasant. And Eric Roberts, one of those, was an outstanding left-handed quarterback, and he was inducted into the Point Pleasant Hall of Fame here earlier this evening. After his great career here at Point Pleasant as a football player, he was also an outstanding baseball player, played for the legend, the late, great Cal Bailey at West Virginia State. Caleb Riffle, track standout. Noah Cyrus, a wrestling football and track and field standout, also honored. Here is Caden Hill looking, and oh, that no. ball picked off. There's a flag coming out. Rowe with the interception. I think we may have ineligible or men downfield here. Oh, man. 
and they're going to give it to him with 29 seconds left. Trevor Hill, great wrestler, football player, and Brady Raymond, a soccer and track and field standout. They were the other Hall of Famers here tonight on or before the game. Here's no Jason Wilkinson. The, the action was legal. Result of the play, interception, first down. And just goes up and gets it. Good job by Connor Rowe, the senior. So Gallia Academy out over the football with 29 seconds to go. In this first half. Well, this is the tightest formation they've been. It looks like they're just going to take a knee and get out of here. Yep. 28-10 lead for Gallia Academy coming in at 2-0. and Point Pleasant with its season opener a week ago and getting a victory. Quite a performance by the Blue Devils in the first half. Cole Carter and his team, they have been impressive here in that's the end of the first this half, first play, half of action. Score, the Gallia Academy Blue Devils, in lots coming up here at halftime. And Hannah 10. Klein trying to track down Gallia Special Academy Banks head coach Village Pizza Point Pleasant. Cole Carter, as always, for taking care of the folks here in the press box. We chat here at Pizza, a Point Pleasant tradition for a whole lot of years. The break and Long his team there, leading it by Pizza 18 over Point Pleasant. And let's send it down to Hannah Klein with Cole Carter. Well, Coach, it seems like your team is using every second wisely in this rivalry match. Talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah, I know. Uh, honestly, that last series where we tried to get a next la another school right before the half, we probably should have run it and killed some clock right there because, you know, they're, they're punching, they're knocking on the door to try to score. And if getting the ball to the half, if they would have scored right there, you know, now it's a one-possession game if they score twice. So um, just got to be a little bit smarter. We're, we're moving the ball well. We're tempoing well. Obviously, um, having some success in the passing game, but got to come out in the second half and establish some type of run game. Uh, and, and just keep playing hard defensively because obviously, you know, they're very fundamentally sound team at Point Pleasant and, and they run the football really well. So last question, um, what's that message for those players once you get in that locker room? I mean, you got an 18-point lead right now and this is a rivalry game. This is what you want. you got to grit your teeth a little bit and get after it and whoever plays harder this last half is going to win a football game. So. Thank you, Coach. Good luck. Guys, I'll go ahead and send it back to you. All right. Thank you so much, Hannah, and special thanks to Cole Carter, the head coach of Gallia Academy. Beautiful shot there of... Ohio Valley Bank Track and Field Stadium here in Point Pleasant. Gallia Academy on top of the home standing Big Blacks at the break by a count of 28 10. Our Huntington Mall halftime report coming up here on the Parmar Friday Night Rivals Game of the Week.
Well, this is a big check brought to you by Big Sandy Superstore. Now, I'm here with Point Pleasant High School's athletic director, Kent Price. Now, Kent, tell me a little bit, $500 going directly to these students. What does this mean for them? Well, we're always thankful for Friday Night Rivals to come and do our game and the donations their sponsors provide to us. So, um, with a small community, every little bit helps, and it goes to all of our programs and everything that we'll uh, use for equipment, supplies, uniforms, everything's needed for to help our student athletes. And how big is this for the students? Because you talked a little bit about the community. Kind of extend on that for me. Yeah, this is we're very community oriented, and uh, I know it's, we're very appreciative of Friday Night Live rivals displaying our our game and, and and the donation. It always helps with our athletic department to go toward the needs of students. Awesome. Well, congratulations! Five hundred dollars going to Point Pleasant High School. Thank you so much, and thank you, Big Sandy Superstore. Yeah, no question about it. Hannah Klein, great job there with Kemp Price. The folks here at Point Pleasant always treat us so great. Pepperoni rolls up here at halftime at McPrice, and you have handed yours off to Robert Stegall. I, I was very impressed. Well, one of the reasons I handed it off to him is, number one, I am ai love pepperoni rolls being from the Fairmont area, so I know what a hot dog and a pepperoni roll really should be like. Those were pretty good, and I thought Robert deserved one with all the statistical stuff that he hands you and I during the first half. So, and Speaking of, right on cue there, McPrice, Gallia Academy with 13 first downs. And the big difference, passing yards, 283 for the Blue Devils of head coach Cole Carter. Point Pleasant does have the edge on the ground, but total yards, Point Pleasant trailing the Blue Devils. And... Time of possession, Point Pleasant, 14 minutes, 45 seconds. We get those big play. Yeah. Don't take much time. Individuals, clock, yeah, for Gallia Academy, and you are going to not need a lot of time. So Point will have the football here, Mick, to start this. That That's a good thing, Mark, because they've gone in and they've made some adjustments. Now, in the first half, there were many times that Gallia Academy had everybody in the box. Now, if they had, if Point Pleasant had anybody out wide, they'd probably be in single coverage out there, and they put a safety in the middle, and he could help on play action pass or whatever a guy out of the backfield. But really, having that many people in the box, it makes it tough to block. And when you're when they're running people in the A gap, in the B gap, as soon as they see someone pull, there's not enough people to block all the people at the point of attack. So it made it very tough, and that's one of the M.O.s for Point Pleasant. They've always been able to run the ball, and with a very good offensive line and five returners, that's important to them. No doubt about it. Jason Wilkinson and his crew doing a great job here tonight. We should note, Mick, that... A gentleman who gave so much of his life to officiating, Mike Webb, passing away earlier today. Our condolences to his family. Mike, a big part of the officiating scene and what has helped make West Virginia athletics so great down through the years. He was a St. Mary's. He was a St. Mary's person of stature there that St. Mary's and for years uh, coaching, teaching, uh, being an official, and he was very invested into it. And so, uh, that's a that's a big loss, and he was a good man. I enjoyed my time when every time we spoke with Mike Webb. Good people. All right, so it will be Stout ready to kick it off here for the Blue Devils. Puts his foot into it. Gathering Good blocks here Good at repeat. the eight-yard line and taken out of bounds Rollins was return. Rollins. So nice Seven return to get it started Davis. here for Dave Darst and his crew in this 30, second half of action. Absolutely. Good field position. Uh, did a nice job on the return, getting it up in there. The academy did a nice job of not letting him go too far. So now it's going to be a matter of, hey, we need to go down and score, and we need to let them know that they're that we're in this game. Saw so Kemp Price there, Price there at halftime. I don't believe any relation, but uh, no. a gentleman that uh, guy. spent a lot of time in coaching. He was at Hannon High School for years as a football coach and had some nice little teams there at Hannon. Unfortunately, they don't have football at the moment. The had a great player. Pick up of a yard. Josh Wellman, who went on to play at Marshall. 
maybe the best player Shandle, ever in hand and high history and he was the first ever player at hand and high school to play in the north south all-star football classic sponsored by wchs tv and fox 11 so hill is the starting quarterback we saw two two qbs there in that first half of action hill the left-hander looking and now still looking and dumps it off and the catch is made. Gets it into the hands of Josh Chapman. And Chapman is 6'7", 240, Mick, a senior. Yeah, they, they were really Chapman questionable on, on whether he was going to get a play tonight because he had had a, a knee injury, and they just didn't know how much he'd play tonight, and they knew it was going to hurt him. But he's a he is a big young man in there, and he's a big target, and that was a great job by the quarterback of not panicking and allowing him to pop open and make it a uh, third and four. Look at that box mark. Look how many people's up in it, and they're coming. Here's Hill. Finds the opening, and Hill will have the first down yardage as he takes the football to the 46, picking up six on the play. Cole Hines there on the stop. He did a nice job reading that mark. Boy, he got got a good pull from his guard and tackle. They got up inside and got behind him and did a nice job. That's a good opening second-half possession for Point Pleasant. Franklin in there on the stop as well. Gunner Peterson heading out for Gallia Academy. Here's Hill with the handoff straight ahead. And good hard good. running there to midfield. Inside handoff. Yeah. Sets up second and five, Mark. I mean, if, if they can do that and continue doing it, that's going to be very successful. And in a little bit, they'll have them up in the box enough that they can play action pass and maybe hit one, maybe get one or somebody wide open. Bertie Bowen came the first player to score against Gallia Academy this season. They had shut out two straight opponents, Megs Local and Athens. Inside handoff, and here is Bentz. And Bentz is a low, but, boy, they read that nicely. Franklin puts the final touches Nathan on the play, Smoker. but Darnbro was there to slow him down, number 21. Well, they – they were running that inside. Here it comes again. He's got a block up inside, but he's trying to bounce it. But, man, Gallia Academy does such a good job of getting to the ball. I mean, they really get to the ball. You think of Franklin there, number zero, and the athlete that he is. But right. I tell you what, right there, he showed he's a, his toughness. Yeah, he's got closing speed, Mark. He, he made up some territory in a, in, in quickly. So, big third down here. Young man who has gotten some interest. So double. They, Hand it off to Bentz, and now here's Marrero trying to turn the corner, and he's going to be stopped good. Open field play there for Gallia Academy as Alex Blair, the sophomore, makes the stop. Great discipline by Gallia Academy's defense. They did a nice job. They wasn't fooled by the double reverse. Here it goes back the other way, and, man, they did a nice job of sticking up in there and taking on a block. Well, the Blue Devils chipped away a bit on that. Opening kickoff, sponsored by OVP Health. And on fourth down, it will be Hill. Boy, he puts his foot into that one, takes Franklin back, and Franklin lost the handle and then scoops it up. Franklin still on his feet nice and job. finally taken down. Can nice job of staying with the play. Uh, yeah, Franklin did a nice job of getting up inside. How about Aiden Fletcher, a freshman, number 52, with the tackle there? Yeah, he's had a good evening. He came out of nowhere. He did a good job on that. He's brought down at the 13-yard line. It'll be first and 10, Gallia County. Many times, Mark, on a punt return, guys John overrun Kiefer it. On the they overrun the it. They don't stay in their lanes. And if a guy makes a couple guys miss, next thing you know, boom, he's out of there. So the ball at the 13, following the five-yard return there by Franklin. Gallia Academy is shy a player. Yep, they're going to get a timeout, and Coach is livid. Timeout. Don't blame him. Gallia, first charge timeout. Well, those Take are the out. situations, Mick. You know you're supposed to be in the game. You shouldn't want to be in the game. Yeah. And uh, just to slip up there, they call the timeout. Blue Devils in the lead. We take a break here in Point Pleasant.
Great crowd on hand here tonight at Ohio Valley Bank Track and Field Stadium, home of Point Pleasant High School football. This area here was once a dust bowl, a practice area. They played down at Old Sanders Memorial Field. and Loved that field. Came here one day for practice. Yeah, it did have a lot of history. Came here for practice, and Coach Dave Dar said, you know, this is going to be our home. Mark, we hope in a year, and buddy, he was correct. They have just done an outstanding job all the way around. Well, with the athletic complexes here, Mark, not only do they have a great football facility, and it's great seating here for playoffs or whatever, but you've got a baseball field over here. You've got the softball field in behind you. You've got a a great track for track and field, which they're very good at here, and Coach Doris does a great job in that. So they've got all the facilities it takes for a school to have a great program. Gallia Academy. Rathburn's back in now. Yeah. With Rathburn. Handed off to Rowe, and Rowe fights for some yardage. Rowe Rowe had an interception there in that first half. It'd be good to to get into the the mind psych of Gallia Academy's offensive coordinator just, you know, what are you doing when you run the ball? Are you trying to set them up? Do you have these other plays coming up that you're going to that you want to work on? You're up 28-13. Are you looking to do some things for the other games? Bradford still looking. Fires got a man. Shamblin with the catch. Man. Oh, and the Shamblin. Rapper pass is complete. And it goes down a little slow there. Hunter Shamblin. And and what a play, Mark. Look right here. He steps up inside, bites him, Official and then out. stands in there and throws him behind it. On the offense. Great job. And the Shamblin, again, second game of the season last year, out for the year with a knee injury. The, uh, first down at the point. May have tweaked it a little bit there, but uh, he walked off on his own. 43-yard pass play, first downs, sponsored by the University of Charleston here in this third quarter. Big pass and catch there from Rathburn to Hunter Shamblin. Oh, good job by the corner here. Yeah, Rowe with nowhere to go. Connor Rowe on the carry. Good job He's by that point. Pleasant defense, Ethan, Jordan, and company. Good job being disciplined or staying home. Look Nate at him sitting Vince. in there. See him get to the outside. He keeps his outside arm Logan free, Mark. Them, keeps the inside and there. doesn't allow him to bounce on him. That's a very good play defensively by yard, Point Pleasant. And Jordan, Logan Higginbotham, and Bence. Bence has played a nice game here for Point Pleasant. Higginbotham is the nephew of one of Dave Dorse's assistant coaches. James Higginbotham, great coach here at Point. Good dude, man. Good guys right there. And it off again. This time it is Cole Hines getting the call. And the Hines, Hines on the carry. will take it down to the 32. You, you should have recognized that play, Mark. That's the old Redskins counter tray where they <laughs> pull. There he comes. They're pulling the, the guard, kicking out, bringing up Running the tackle. The 31. Yeah. You see for the Washington Redskins. You've been a huge fan was, of those years. Yeah, back in the day when they uh, had a gentleman from Ripley, Paul Lanham. That's right. That's coached right. against both of these schools in his coaching career at Ripley before going on to the National Football League, 360 yards of offense for Gallia Academy. Getting ready for play 34 here. Timeout, Gallia. Gallia Academy going to call a timeout. That gives us a chance to send it down to Hannah Klein. 
Well, let's take a minute to recognize both of the bands tonight. Point Pleasant will actually be competing in the Battle of the Bands on October 28th. That'll be held at 4 o'clock. It'll be here at the Point Pleasant Stadium. Well, it'll actually include dozens of high school bands from all over Ohio and West Virginia. I actually had the chance to chat with the band director earlier, and he told me they're excited to compete and show what Point Pleasant has to offer. Thank you, Hannah. Big third down here for Point Pleasant to get him off the field. If they can come up with a play or knock a ball down or put some pressure on his quarterback so he can't just stand here and throw to anybody he wants. Third down and three. Oh Rathburn guns it to Hines, who slips the tackler. Cole Hines looking for the end zone. It's going to be out about the one, Mark. Rathburn's pass complete to Cole Hines. And Cole Hines, our scholar goal. athlete for Gallia Academy. He's got some speed too, Mark. He gets to the outside right there. He got a block. And Here you can see, throws it right in there. There's too far. Cush is too far. Missed tackle. Missed tackle. Uh, I guarantee Coach Darst and the defensive team will be going in there and say, boys, you got to wrap up right here. They're too good. You can't let them out in open space. Not an easy thing to do. It's something you got to practice. It takes time. Schoon finally brought him down. 30. 30-yard pickup. University of Charleston, our first down sponsor here in the third quarter. And Gallia Academy now Play operating in the offense, number five. Five yards, first down. Linville State University red zone. I don't think that'll curtail them any, you know, dead ball. Is that the one? Now it's going to be at the six. I don't think that'll even matter to them. Level State getting a season opening win yesterday over Northwood. Level State University prepares and inspires students to be thoughtful, productive, engaged, and responsible citizens who contribute to the well-being of their community, state, nation, and world. Pioneer your future and into the end zone. A Blue Devil touchdown Scoring for Cole Gunner Carter's Peterson team the will there. be Gunner Peterson. Peterson, the Please sophomore. Stop the clock. Please stop the clock. <laughs> Please reset the clock to 433. Oh, it, it's going to be a touchdown. The clock just kept running, and they needed to stop it so that it would be, be right. Marshall Good drive. Good Marshall drive. University, our... Touchdown sponsor. Kick is up by Stout, and it is good. 35 to 10. Impressive drive, Mark. Academy 35, Point Pleasant 10. Peterson gets into the end zone for the Blue Devils. They'll be kicking off when we return here in Mason County.
Our scoring summary sponsored by Mark A. Hunt and Associates, the Canal Valley's premier personal injury law firm. Seven plays, 87 yards, 403 off the clock. Gunnar Peterson scores for the Gallia Academy Blue Devils, and they have extended the lead over Point Pleasant to 35-10 with 433 remaining here in this third quarter of action on our second installment of the Parmar Friday Night Rivals Game of the Week. If you don't have a Parmar store near you now, you will soon. Time for another OVP Health Kickoff, formerly Ohio Valley Physicians, in business since 1999. Stout has it teed up. Good looking kick, and Marrero will take it at the 11. Anthony Marrero taken down. A nice tackle by Darnbro for Gallia Academy. Yeah, they got in their lanes. You can see him in their lanes right now. He steps the outside, but boy, he just stays right with him. Going in a hurry. You know, sometimes, Mark, a kickoff like that, when you're, when you're kicking over to that hash, you cannot let them, you cannot let the, the team you're kicking to come back to the wide side of the field. And that's part of the problem. If that kicker keeps that ball in that hash, he's keeping it so you can pin him in, so you can pin the runner and he can't use the wide side. And he got loose over there, so uh, good thing he was in behind him because he had some room down the sideline. Hand off to Bowen, and not much there for Bowen. Peterson, Cole Hines. Brody Bowen. There on the stop. Stephen Davis was there for Gallia Academy. And there's just a lot of people there at the point of attack. And, you know, it just looks like Gallia Academy is just saying, look, we're going to step up in here, and we're going to put eight in the box, and you're going to have to throw it before we believe that you're not, before we think you're going to throw it. We're going to put man-to-man on the outside, and we'll cover a safety high. And we say, okay. You're going to have to throw it or something because we're not going. And you look right there. There's seven across the line, two linebackers, and they're man-to-man on the outside with the safety at the top. Handed off again to Bowen and again slams Bowen into Bowen. a white wall there as Cole Hines. Carries for about three yards. Out More guess tough to do. I mean, line. that's tough for the offensive line to do in, in a hurry. Again, they got a lead block here, and he's trying to get up in behind it, but there's just the too many five. people concealed, and it's very difficult. I don't know during the week, knowing that their quarterback had, wasn't going to be able to play this week, if they kind of had an idea that, hey, uh, you know, Gallia Academy is going to put eight in the box, seven in the box, and make it tough on the offensive line, and they had a chance to go over that. But that's not something you just do real quick. That's something that you really need reps on and film. Stephen Davis was there on the stop as well. Point looking at a third and five. Hill launches, catch made, and slipping away Jeff. is Bentz, Did who nice will jump. get the first down. Bentz Hayden is Hill's a weapon for this complete. big black team as he takes it to the Nate 39. You can see here, he'll give him the ball, made a nice, made a nice throw to him, and he did a nice job of turning that into a first down. That was a well-thrown pass and a good job by Bentz. University of Charleston, our first down sponsor. Now Asher Robinson checks in and the pitch. Oh, he's going. Here is Bentz. That was well blocked. Good call. Bentz takes the pitch. Big run for Nate Bentz. Now the pitch made there by Hill. You can see right here, Mark, he got him in action. A little bit late. It got coming in late. Good kick out block. He got up inside of it. Nice job. 28-yard gain by Bentz on the pitch from Hill. 232 left in the quarter, Mark. I know as a coach, if you're standing on the sideline, says, man, we need to get this one in. We need to put the pressure back on them to where, you know, maybe we can get a couple stops and we're right back in this thing. Trail by 25, one here two years ago, down by 16. Hill will keep it. Hill does a nice job. Sure does. A young man who's a sophomore and, you know, getting a taste of it here and didn't flinch, Mick, when he came into this situation tonight. I I think he's done – I think he's handled it really well, Mark. I think he's done a really good job. That's not the easiest thing. Here he puts his nose right up in there and makes a, make a guy miss. and got a good block on the outside by his receivers. He's going to need that help as he goes on here in the fourth quarter if they're going to expect to get in this 
have a chance to try to to win this thing at the end. He has ran the ball 10 times for 87 yards. And a tough 87. Another first down there, sponsored by the University of Charleston. Bad snap, and he'll just get on will it. Just get on it. Rowe was bearing Daniel down there. Up the snap. Lost back to the 31 yard line. Man. Yeah, those can be drive killers. Oh, makes uh, As a coach, you just hate it. I'm telling you, you get the sharpest, worst feeling in your stomach. I mean, God dang, man, you're moving the ball. You're getting it down. You're going to try to go in before the fourth quarter starts. You put a score on the board, and next thing you know, you're looking at <laughs> second and 21. And you get a lot of those on your sheet, those play calls. Hill with pressure coming, yep. and yep, they got him as he was releasing. Good pressure there by Hunter Shamblin. Hill's pass intended for defense uh, is incomplete. He'll do a better job handling that the next time. He'll make a little dip fake or something to try to slow that guy down instead of standing right in his zero. He's zero and right in on him. Think of the Point Pleasant quarterbacks down through the years. We mentioned Eric Roberts, who was inducted into the Hall of Fame earlier here tonight. They had Aiden Yates, Kaysen Payne. Of course, Evan Roach just graduated. Cody Mitchell, who... It's kind of a hybrid QB. So Daryl Mitchell here tonight, who was a great player here and went on to play as a tight end at WVU. Caden Hill looking. Oh, he's got it. Launching. Got his man and cannot oh, hang my, 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 my. on. Man, he had him. He did a great Rollins. job waiting for him to break open and not throw it and threw it over the safety's head. He did a great job waiting. Man, that's a tough Good job by the offensive line. Just and catch Just catch it, son. Look it right in your hands, then you can celebrate. Man, good play call. Good job. Now, oh, field goal. This is the young man that Mark's been work, Mark Johnson's now been working with a little bit. So, 47 yard at. 48-yard attempt. Place it down there at the 38. Well, he's one of the top kickers in the state, Mark. Puts his foot into it, and that one will be short. And the field goal attempt is just power. Get in situations like that. We give it a shot. So, oh, yeah. Gallia Academy will take over here with 114 to go in the third. Schrader just a junior. So the Blue Devils, the head coach, Cole Carter, will take over. I'm very impressed with Coach Carter, Mark. He does a nice job. He's very disciplined about what he's doing. He doesn't stand for mistakes. Obviously, he's been a little upset when he didn't Devils. have the right lineman. The guys weren't out there, and he called a timeout. He's not saving them to the end of the game. He's staying right on him. So I'm very impressed by him and his coaching staff and the Gallia Academy team. This is a really nice team. Coach Carter, Gallia Academy graduate, and started his college career at Moorhead, finished at Capital University in Columbus, Ohio. Blue Devils on the ground. And out from under the pile was Hines. Inside handoff. On a roll on the carry. Tackle made by Brody Pearson. Parker Bowles in there as well for the Big Blacks. Second down eight. Clock winding down here in the third. And here is Ratburn. Nice fake and... Takes the yeah. football to the 28-yard line, about a six-yard pickup. Really nice job of faking Eight down inside and keeping that ball. Tackle by Anthony Marrero. Third and three. About 100. Third may down. Down. He's going to wait till the fourth yep. quarter, though. He'll wait. I don't blame him. Wait. Get everybody together. Make sure they're all on the same page here. So all zeros away we go to the fourth quarter. Fourth quarter. 
Gallia Academy 35 and Point Pleasant 10. We return with the final 12 minutes of play here in our Parmar Friday Night Rivals Game of the Week. Thanks to Kirk Patrick Animal. Welcome Hospital back here to beautiful Ohio Valley, Valley Bank, Bank Track Patrick and Hospital Field Stadium. 86 meeting all time between Gallia Academy and Point Pleasant. Pretty close. Gallia Academy leads the series 42 38. There have been five ties along the way. Cole Carter and Dave Darst guiding their alma maters. Cole Carter, young guy looking for his 12th career win as the head coach. And think about this, last year, 24 years old, he faced one of the winningest coaches in Ohio and Randy Bauman in the playoffs out of Licking Valley and got the win in a great game, 37-30. For the Big Blacks, Dave Darst is the head coach for Point Pleasant. And here is a pass to Franklin. Franklin with a great spin Man. and takes it down. To the Franklin 30. Such an explosive team, Mark. I mean, they can just do so much. And he is Nathan so good at making plays, you know, ad living in there. I mean, man. Dave Darst, 17th year. What a job he has done guiding this program. State championship team. All of his teams but two in the playoffs. He's in a bunch of Hall of Fames. Glenville's Hall of Fame. The National Wrestling Hall of Fame. Hand off to Hines, and Hines gets it inside the 30. At this point in the game, we may see a little bit more running out of Galley Academy market because they're just trying to, okay, let's get these 12 minutes over with get across a bridge, you know. I mean, they've kind of done, come in here and done what they've done it wanted to do it's 35 13 and they just need the time to get off the clock don't get anybody hurt and get ready for the next game in blue devils open the season on a saturday night at home memorial field taking out meg's local 39 to nothing and then last week on the road and they faced off with athens at joe burrow stadium in the plains and got the win there 30 to nothing hand off to row and Rowe with a handoff to Connor Rowe. Taken down. Slowed up by several Point Pleasant players, including Dylan hey, Kiefer. Logan Higginbotham on the tackle for the Big Blacks. Third down. Rings up third and about 
two from the 27 yard line. Rathper getting the call from Cole Carter across the way. Cole's dad, Larry, on his staff. Rathburn slings it out. Franklin makes the grab and nice piece of tackling there. Made by Franklin, the ball carrier, Schoon. First down, yardage down to the Does get the first down, though. Bit. Yeah, sure did. Limping a little bit, Mark. And, you, you know, I'm going to keep those guys are game breakers, man. So. His uh, his time may be limited here. Then we haven't. Uh, then we. I was going to say, have we seen Hunter Shamblin? And he is back out there. Saw him hit up a little slow there earlier. Optimum, our first down sponsor here in this fourth quarter of play. Football at the twenty three yard line. Rathburn. Fires, and the ball is picked off. Interception by Point Pleasant's Connor Hatton. Great job. Great job getting back in there. And he tried to force it. It would have taken a a bow and arrow to get that ball where he had to put it, but uh, great job by Point Pleasant coming up with a stop. Here's a flag on the play. Jason Wilkinson will give us the call here. Illegal formation. Five players in the backfield. That penalty's declined. Point play is the ball. Big Blacks will have the football. So First down, Big Blacks. Mick will Ladies and gentlemen, all across the state, send out have been asked a, to make a special announcement from the West Virginia State Police and the Mason County Sheriff's Department. Uh, there will be zero tolerance for fighting tonight. No fighting at all. We know that, but it needs to be emphasized tonight. And I've been asked to make that announcement tonight from our local law enforcement. Making a sportsmanship zero tonight. No fighting. announcement here. Thank you. God knows all about great sportsmanship, Mick, is Jim Hamrick. Yeah. And Jim, our dear friend, the commissioner of the Mountain State Athletic Conference, hospitalized today. And we wish Jim a speedy recovery there at Camden Clark Hospital. Here is Bowen on the move as he takes Brody it up to the 46-yard line. First down. 20-yard gain for Bowen, an optimum first down. Oh, nice job. Here he is turning on the pitch. Good block back right there. He got a kick out to the outside. Gets it up in there and hang on that thing in two hands. Officially 21 yards. Big Blacks break the huddle here. Hill in there at quarterback. And a great job. Filling in for Jason Hughes inside handoff and finding running room oh. is Bentz. Bentz Two with great another moves. move. Bentz to down great moves to the 21 Bentz. yard line. On the run for the Big Blacks. Which is block? Down. Which is blocking work? Helmet off on the offense number 50 has to set out one play. Man, great block outside there. And Ben's made two huge moves right there. Really first good down, job. Big Blacks. The Gallia Academy. 33-yard pickup. Optimum first down. I like how they're fighting back, Mark. I mean, I like that. I mean, they've been down. You know, there's still seven minutes left in the game, and they're fighting back. So, It's a Dave Dars team. We expect nothing less. Also, one other piece of business. So on this September 1st, great day to start the month on a Friday. Happy birthday to Kenny Bass. Kenny Bass. See Kenny tonight on Friday Night Football Extra. Whistle sound. Dead ball. Encroachment on the defense. Number 32. Five yards. Point Pleasant. Five additional yards here. They'll take them any way they can get up at this point in the game. When they first started playing this series back in 1922, there's been a few off years, and back in 2014, it started back up, and Cole Carter was a junior quarterback on the Blue Devils. Hill will keep it, and Hill still oh finally gosh. taken away by, oh, my gosh. Gunner Peterson takes it away and will take it the other way. Oh. Touchdown, Gallia Academy. Big play 
as Point Pleasant was on the move. The Blue Devil defense comes up huge. I'm absolutely sick for Coach Darcy's staff. They get a touchdown dropped in the end zone, and then they get down the field and drive, and the kid reaches in and takes it from the quarterback and goes the other way. I've been on the other end of that, Mark. When I was coaching varsity football at Ravenswood, we actually had a kid at Williamstown that was driving the ball, and when we were driving the ball in the second half, the ball was taken from him and run the other way for a touchdown. It's not a great feeling for a coach, I can tell you that. 90-yard play for a touchdown on the defensive side. Marshall University... Our touchdown sponsor, Caleb Stout, drills yet another extra point, 42-10. Here you go, Mark. You can see him going up inside as he goes up. Now watch this right here. He reaches in and flips the ball back out of his hands. He probably had one in. But he gets a couple blocks back down here too. We head to a break here and a big break. Gallia Academy on the defensive end. They're up 32 Uh, don't ever disrespect Messi. I love you, one non. Messi, 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 Messi. Messi. No, 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 no. All right, 30 seconds, okay? It's a long time. It is a long time. Well, I'm here with Point Pleasant student section, and I want to talk to some of those students myself. So talk to me a little bit. What does this rivalry mean to you guys? You know, this is probably the biggest rivalry in the state. So coming out with the win whenever we can means a lot to us and the school. It's unfortunate. This isn't how we wanted it to go, but we did have our starting quarterback get hurt last week. We got two fresh quarterbacks, first starts ever. You can tell the nerves got to us because of how big the rivalry is. So a couple bad mistakes that they capitalized on. Just unfortunate. And I want to hear from you because we always look at every student section. I want to see is Point Pleasant the loudest student section. So go ahead. Bye bye. Ready? Yeah! Well, the Nightwalkers here right. on a Friday night, September, the first Friday night, still at it. They are still going at it. I think that guy's after my job, Mark. That's a pretty good analysis of what was going on in the game by a student out of the student section. 6.58 remaining, a big defensive play. Gunnar Peterson, 90 yards, rips it away, ball up in the air, and Mark A. Hunt and Associates, attorneys at law, are scoring summary in a pretty simple one play, yeah. 90 yards. Stout will kick it off, an OVP health kickoff. That may be one of the most unusual plays, Mark, that will be on uh, your Friday night scoreboard. I mean, that may be one of the most unusual ones. So all 
over West Virginia. From the four is Rollins. And Rollins gallops his way to the 33-yard line. You know, running hard and Wilson Rollins on the return for the Big Black. You know, Point Pleasant, they know one way, and that's to play hard. They keep fighting here against this very impressive Gallia Academy football team. Two-edged sword right here, Mark, with 6.48 left in the game, down 42 to 13. You can throw it. But what was it they used to say that uh, Woody Hayes said, three things happen when you throw the ball and two of them is bad? And it could be with an inexperienced quarterback, that might happen. But how else are you going to get him any experience in game time, game speed situations? 42-10, our score, Gallia Academy. And here is Man. Bowen. And Bowen, I'll tell you what, been Ace impressive Bowen tonight. The carry, first down for the Big Blacks, all the way down to the Gallia Academy, 37. That was a pass. Bowen on the reception and then turned on the Jets. That was, uh, here you can see as he goes to the outside right here, he just kind of tosses it out to him and said, here, you take it. 30 yards. Good speed right there. Didn't get enough fuel. Handed off to Bentz, and Bentz trying to He's turn the corner him. here, and Bentz with the big-time stiff arm Bentz. Yep. Is a fighter. Asher Robinson, by the way, First he is the QB for Point Pleasant. Toss that pass to Bowen and then the handoff here to Bentz. So, point right back on the move and an optimum first down. Now, he had a great block up front, good kick out. He got up inside of it and then he did a really good job of getting his hand out and keeping people away from him. Here's the kick out, he gets up inside of it. Now, look at that one stiff arm. Here's going to come another one right here. Good job. Number 14 for Point Pleasant picking up 19. And number 19, Robinson throws, and that one will fall incomplete into the end zone. There's a, a picture of moon over the campus of Point Pleasant, Mark. Asher Robinson pitching to Bowen. Bowen cutting it up and taken down. Cole Hines wraps him up and takes him down at the 13-yard line. Yep. Brody Bowen on the carry for the Big Blacks. 42-10 game. It was a 7 nothing Gallia Academy lead. Point Pleasant's Brody Bowen went 69 yards to tie it up. First score of the season against Gallia Academy, and it was... Gallia Academy with the defensive stop, but Point did try a field goal. 26-yarder by Schrader was good as Bowen fights through traffic. So hard run, hard run up inside. Gallia Academy faced its first deficit of the season, but then they retake the lead as Hunter Shanley goes nine yards. And then it was Rathburn to Franklin. Rathburn to Franklin again, and... Peterson with a two-yard run, then the big first play down, by big Peterson line. defensively. Another optimum first down here. As Point Pleasant on the move here. This is why it was a shame that that kid got the ball stripped from him with 90 yards. Ago. You never know what could happen here at the end of a game. Robinson the end side, handoff to Bentz to the five. Bentz on the handoff. Pick up Robinson. a three on the play. Hines on the tackle. Second down goal from the five-yard line. Dave Darst. Thanks again. Grandfather, father, son, and, of course, Dave played football here at Point Pleasant. Shag Darst, his dad, the story goes, played six years of high school football (laughs) before they finally said, okay, (laughs) six is enough. (laughs) No, it's pretty common anymore, especially in college. Guys can go and get red-shirted and COVID case and something else, transfer. And 
There's some guy playing the other night. He played seven years someplace. Well, there was an injury timeout, but teams are right back out on the field here. Second and five for Point Pleasant. We're good if they could get a score in right here, Mark. It would be good for their confidence going into the next week. Dave Doris played for the great Steve Safford. Cole Carter played for three different head coaches at Gallia Academy. The inside handoff there. Getting the call on that play Ethan was Jordan Ethan the Jordan. The Jordan's a senior, 5'10", 155. He picks up two on the play. Once again, special thanks to our game sponsor. Cole Carter Ohio Valley story Bank. back there in 2014. Sponsor of our tonight's game he said how great it was to come. see that rivalry start back up when he was playing. 7 of 14 in that game, 77 yards. Robinson pitching to Bowen, and Bowen taken down. Boy, Peterson has played a whale of a game the on the defensive for side for Gallia Academy. He shot in there in a hurry, and that's kind of been the, the play that's really been good for Point Pleasant, Leonard just Peterson that little run, sprint, sprint, run, sprint, and get the ball out to him and try to make it. So, Well, fourth down right here, Mark. 328 on a running clock. I don't blame him. I'd go for it. See if you can't put something in. Bentz has checked in. Fourth down and four. Football at the six. Asher Robinson takes off and oh, flips it. it, and the pass is caught. Yeah. He didn't call him down, did he? Down short. at the one-yard line. Oh, man. A bench caught it maybe in the man, end this zone. this is a great job right here, Mark. He's trying, as he's trying to look and look, and it's covered, and now he takes off running, and then all of a sudden he stands right there, and he said, I'm going to throw it. And he did a good job. He took a lick for it. The pass is complete. The ball is rolled down at the goal line. Wow. Oh, man. That's about as close. Can as we go to New York? Can we go to New York and see if they'll make a call? Change the call. It looked like a, the, the ball was over the goal line on that. I don't think it was. Yeah. A couple that's a of tough t- one. A couple of tough breaks for Point Pleasant. Oh, my on goodness. That end of the field. They've so, had a cup break here these last couple of weeks, haven't they? Your quarterback goes down You're in your first game. Uh, you know, they're a big tight end. He hasn't played much tonight. And, you know, golly. The Gallia Academy takes over here in this historic rivalry. Well, they haven't been under center Come all out. night, Mark. Gallia. And, and you're going to snap the ball four yards deep into your end zone. Well, Mick, there you get a shot at the Mason County yep. Fairgrounds. Just Don't forget to head over to a short deal. distance from here. They played a game there in this wonderful series back in the 20s. It's a home game for Point Pleasant. Then Point Pleasant started using Harmon Park, which has been a very popular place for many years. But well, that's a great county fair year in, year out you have. The Jackson County Fair, you have the Gallia County Fair, you come to the Mason County Fair, the Mace County Fair. I mean, it is fair season, you know, by the end of July, and football practices are starting. It's a wonderful time uh, right there by the West Virginia Farm Museum. But once upon a time, a football game played there in this historic rivalry. Many thanks to our great Kenny Barnett for painting that video for us earlier in the week. And there's our champions of the game trophy that will be handed out here following the conclusion of this showdown. The Academy captured the trophy in 2020. Their memorial field did a game as they took on Rock Hill. So champions of the game trophy along with our Todd Judy Ford Scholar Athlete plaques. Come to us all season long from all sport trophies in Cedar Grove. Call them for all your award needs at 304-539-1668. So the Blue Devils on to the field just under three minutes to go in the game. 
they are under center mark. And it is Shamblin, and Shamblin manages to yeah. fight out of there. And I think he got jarred the there by Bentz, I believe. Rex, it's Hunter Shamblin. Uh, clock is running. And so they can get a couple. Just out of the end zone. They can get a couple minutes off this clock, and just kind of. Actually, that was Connor Hatton who almost had him there in the end zone. Tonight's Parmar Friday Night Rivals game of the week, streaming on Facebook Live, being sponsored by Jan Dills, Attorneys at Law. Car wreck called Jan Dills, Attorneys at Law. Mark, you had mentioned that. Uh, in 20, they had won and played Rock Hill. You want to remember? You don't remember about that game? That was when the COVID all took yep. place. Those guys had to step five yards apart over on the sideline. The referee had to change the ball out every time. Uh, there had to be a different ball used, and it was they went through a tough time from then till you know till basketball and they shut things down for the tournaments and stuff. Crazy. Third down. Remember, people in the stands had to sit like five feet apart or something like that. And oh my gosh, <laughs> we never go back to that. No, well, Rathburn has been impressive at quarterback tonight. Yeah, for... they had twelve guys in the Simple. huddle. Illegal substitution on yep. the offense. Half the distance to goal. Third down. Twelve guys in the huddle, and one of them ran off. I'm sure they would just like to. Run this ball up through there and punt it out there and get this game over with. Try not to get anybody hurt. Oh, no. We got different. Rathburn. Did he get rid of it? Ball is loose. And flag comes out. Have to determine whether that's a fumble or a pass he was taken down. This will be interesting. I think they're calling it according to at least the Point Pleasant players. A safety. safety. Let's get the call from Jason Wilkinson. We have two fouls on the play. Illegal touching by the offense. Illegal forward pass by the offense. Results in a safety. Well, that'll make it a 42 to 12 count. Well, and they'll get the ball back. Now, this is something as coaches that you don't practice very often. It's a safety. So the punt will take place or the kick will take place from the 20-yard line, and then you can fair catch it to keep the clock from running, or you can run it back. So, I, yeah, you go over it as a coach. I mean, you go over this, but, you know, not as many times you do an onside kick and not as many times you do a fake extra point and not as many times for fake punts. But, you, you know, you're conscious that, you know, it may happen. But. It's not the top of the list when you go over special team stuff. So they're probably talking about it, how they're going to do it here. Well, Cole Carter brings his guys over briefly and then sends them right back out. Of course, Stout. Excellent leg. And it looks like they're going to have Pun? Stout punt it. Following the safety, Guy Academy be kicking to a free kick to the Big Black. Nice punt. Dawson Rollins will haul it in at the 35, out over the 40, and gets Dawson it to the 46-yard line. Tackle at the 46-yard line. With 114 to go. They're going to have the Champions of the Game trophy presented. Also, the Battle of the Bridge trophy will be presented as well. And that trophy is huge. It is a miniature bridge. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yep. Rotary clubs here in the two communities. It's a neat neat trophy, though, Mark. I like stuff like that. I like the old school stuff. 86 meeting all time. Asher Robinson guns it and nice, nice shot. Yeah, nice shot indeed. Catch made there by Asher number Robinson, two, Jordan Elliott, or make that Anthony Marrero. Complete to Reese Hunt. 
We'll check out Reese Hunt, number four, on the catch. Marrero, excuse me, on yeah, the reception. I thought it was Marrero. <laughs> Eighteen yard pickup. Marrero in motion. Robinson looking. And Robinson will keep it. Ball oh, is loose. It. And Gallia Academy pounces on it. Man, you can't hold that ball out there with one hand in the traffic like that. And coming up with it is Stout for Gallia Academy. This will be a kneel down for the next 41 seconds. And I'll tell you what. Just from the perspective of watching this game, very special announcement. I'm really impressed a with the Gallia Academy's uh, I believe with the offense and, also was and how fast they've got guys. Year. They're skilled people. They're very uh, good. They're going to win a lot of games this year, and they're very disciplined. The coaching staff, they come, come in here the on the road in a rivalry game Clark. and dominate it. So, really good job. And Coach Darsh's team for never quitting. I mean, you know, they did a great job tonight under – Tough situations. Not easy when you lose your quarterback. So they'll be better next week. They'll be better next week from having played this game and having had some confidence. Some don't look at all losses as losses, Mark. You gotta find what's the good things on it. So, you know. Well, I think we have witnessed our final play of the night in this football game. It started Steamy conditions, but uh, cooled down to be a nice evening, 86 meeting. And Gallia Academy going to get win number 43 of this series. Clock ticks to zeros. And that's going to do it, folks. And it is Gallia Academy 42, Point Pleasant 12. And we will return with our postgame coverage in just a moment from our Parmar Friday Night Rivals. Game the of the week. Return to action in two It's time now for our Big Sandy Superstore Big Play of the Game when big plays happen. Big Sandy Superstore also donates $500 each week to the host school of our Parmar Friday Night Rivals Game of the Week. And how about Gunner Peterson? Point Pleasant driving for a score. Peterson comes up with the football and takes it 90 yards the other way. A big play, one of many on the night for Gallia Academy. The winning Blue Devils and Hannah Klein is with the Blue Devils and winning head coach Cole Carter.
Well, Coach, I first want to talk about tonight because this is not just an ordinary game. This is a rivalry. Talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, it means everything to us, obviously, going going into that game last year, uh, kind of as the underdogs, had some kids out and end up pulling that out 22-21. We really wanted to create separation this year as a program um, and just super proud of this group of seniors. I have a lot of players, and whenever you have these guys, it's easy to coach them. So describe them for me. Um, I mean, <laughs> This is the first group I've been here with for four years. My second year as the head coach. Um, whenever I came in here, um, this freshman class, I, I knew they were really talented. I knew they had a great base. Um, and my job has just been really easy because they're very coachable and, and they want to do well. Um, and they handle everything for me, really. So great leaders. Can't say enough about them. Well, it seems like you as a coach and these players came out here with something to prove. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I'm not too far removed from the rivalry. I'm 25, and I, I played here in 2016, 2015, and I was on some really lopsided ends on, on the other end of it. Um, so it feels good to be, you know, on the coaching side and, and getting some wins against these guys because a great program and a lot of respect for what Coach Darcy has done here. 18 years, one of the premier coaches in this area, and just a lot of respect for him. Well, I'm going to be the first to congratulate you. FNR, week number two champions. Coach, congratulations. So and I'm going to hear from you. All right, great job, Hannah. Gallia Academy tonight. You know, 457 yards of offense, 399 through the year, through the air. And Nick Price, your thoughts? Well, first of all, I really was impressed the way the Gallia Academy came in here. They had a plan, and they were going to play fast, and they were going to play, get their athletic people the ball, and they did that. Point Pleasant playing a little left-handed tonight with their quarterback down. Tried to stay in there, but you know. They did the best they could. They'll be better next week from having the experience this week. But, boy, I tell you, Gallia Academy, nice nice team, well coached, deserved to win. Yeah, they'll move on and play Chesapeake next week, point off for two, and they'll play two weeks against Scott. So here in our latest installment of our Parmar Friday Night Rivals Game of the Week, it's Gallia Academy winning it over Point Pleasant in the Battle of the Bridge, 42-12. to for Mick Price, Hannah Klein, and our great FNR crew, this is Mark Martin saying so long from Ohio Valley Bank Track and Field Stadium here on the campus of Point Pleasant High School in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. We thank you for watching the Parmar Friday Night Rivals Game of the Week.